Hello everyone, Kimberly here with another 10 minute tidbit for high performance. And today we are gonna talk about persuasion. <laughs> okay, so persuasion, according to the dictionary, one of the dictionaries, is the act of coaxing someone to do or believe something. The act of coaxing someone or persuading them to do or believe something. So persuasion is very situational. You can look at it that way. So let's say you're going out to dinner tonight and one simple act of persuasion would be persuading the person you're going out to dinner with to go to a Chinese restaurant versus a Mexican restaurant, right? It's an act of coaxing someone to do something or to believe something. You know, um, you may even want them to believe that Chinese food is better for you than Mexican food. I don't know, just pull that out of a hat. Not that it is, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying? We use our powers of persuasion to coax somebody to follow our lead. I know that there was a boy in high school who would not do his homework. So his mother tried to persuade him with a $20 bill every day to do his homework and failed. <laughs> no homework was done, okay? So think about this for a minute. Now you're trying to get into college and you have straight C's because you have straight A's in your test and straight F's on your homework. I would not suggest you try this at home, right? Straight C's is not a great way to get every college you apply to to let you in. You cannot persuade those people to allow you to go to that college if you are not coming with good grades, right? That's another form of persuasion. You trying to coax somebody to do something for you. So here's the thing. Sometimes with that first example, the other person doesn't know you. And the other person is going upon facts, like grades, or even for the restaurant, they could be going upon facts, like they've eaten Chinese food before at a certain restaurant, they didn't like it, or they've eaten Chinese food before at another restaurant and they absolutely loved it. So people, even though you're trying to persuade them with your beautiful powers of persuasion, they still are gonna fall back upon their own experiences, their own knowledge, their own preferences of whether you can coax them to do that thing or not. Like I could be coaxed personally to take a job in a major city. Let me put it that way. <laughs> you could try to coax me to take a job in a major city and it does not matter what you say, I'm not a city girl, it is not happening. So people fall upon first, their own inner guidance when you're trying to persuade them. The next thing they fall upon, well, maybe, maybe it can happen either way, but another thing they fall upon is you, your know, like, and trust factor. If they know you and they like you and they trust you, you will have a much better chance at persuading them to do the thing you're trying to get them to do, right? So let's make this practical, right? If you're trying to get your significant other to have a lovely date night with you? Are you gonna have spent the last month being cantankerous and being annoyed and being gruff and then be able to persuade them to do something that you want them to do at, on the spur of the moment that is completely opposite of the way your last behavior was for the last month? Absolutely not. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So even though persuasion is situational, where you're trying to coax a person to do something or believe something, you have to build up that no like, and trust factor. You have to build up your own, your own relationship with them so that it is at a place where you can even have a chance of persuading them to do something. It seems so simple and it seems so basic. Persuasion is situational, but it's not instantaneous. It literally is not instantaneous 
to that situation, right? You have to plan for persuasion. So my friend, my 10 minute tidbit for you today is every person in your life, whether it's a coworker or a significant other or a family member or a friend, doesn't matter who they are. You need to build up that relationship before you have any chance of being able to persuade them to do anything. Even if you go to the bank and you don't even know that teller and you're having a problem and you walk into that bank and this is the first time they've had any interaction with you and you're annoyed and you're huffing and puffing and your posture is aggressive and your voice is aggressive. I'm telling you, while I'm asking you, is that bank teller going to be able to be persuaded to help you? Or is that bank teller going to say, sorry, I can't help you? Versus if you walk in, you have a smile on your face, you're standing up tall, you're smiling, you're making eye contact, you're talking in a nice tone of voice. Do you think you'll have a better chance of persuading them? And even though it's only been a one minute lead up, that one minute lead up is still building that no like and trust factor and that relationship space, even if you only have one minute to do it. So my friend, if you want to persuade somebody to do something, be aware of how you are showing up, be aware of how you are queuing up the persuasion for them, be aware of how you are setting up that relationship with them. And I bet, I know you will have much, much, much better success at persuading than you ever thought possible. <laughs> so that's my 10 minute tidbit or less for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gives you something to think about. I hope it gives you hope and it empowers you to know that even if you've not been successful in the past, trying to poke someone to do something or believe something, you do have a new tool where you know now it's all about the lead up to the persuasion. You got this. Alrighty, if you like this video, please leave your comments below. If you'd like to chat, you can contact me at Kimberly Trevs, that's T-R-E-F-Z at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you and I'd love to hear how your new persuasion is going for you. Alrighty, till next time.